this video, I want to talk about function compositions and transformations. We've got kind of a summary at the top of the page. When we perform operations on the outside of a function, we always see vertical changes in the graph. For example, f of x with plus c on the outside shifts the function up c. f of x with minus c on the outside shifts the function down c. c times f of x stretches or compresses the function vertically. And negative f of x reflects the function vertically. Now I should mention that in all these cases we're assuming c is positive. Now on the other hand, when we replace the inside of a function, we see horizontal changes to the graph. For example, when we do f of, and then in parentheses, x plus c, we're replacing x with x plus c, and that shifts the function left c units. When we do f of, in parentheses, x minus c, we shift the function to the right c units. When we do f of cx, we compress or stretch the function horizontally. Remember, those are the really counterintuitive ones because they always seem backwards of what you think they're going to be. And then f of negative x reflects the function horizontally over the y-axis. When we do these horizontal movements, these replacements, so to speak, they're just compositions of functions, meaning we are plugging one function into another. Before we actually do the function composition, I just want to make sure that you remember what the transformations do. So pause the video and just answer these four questions about what the transformation does to f of x. Okay, we're back. What does f of, in parentheses, x plus 2, close the parentheses, do to f of x? Well, that's a replacement. We've replaced x with x plus 2 which means it's horizontal, and we're shifting f two units to the left. Okay, what does f of left parentheses 2x right parentheses do to f of x? This is also a replacement. We're replacing x with 2x, so it's horizontal, and it's a stretch or compress, right? So f of 2x is going to be a compression by a factor of 2. In other words, we're squishing it horizontally. How about negative 2 f of x? Well, this is now all happening on the outside of the function, which means it's got to have a vertical effect. We're leaving f of x completely intact. The negative is going to cause a vertical reflection, and the multiplication by 2 is going to cause a vertical stretch. And finally, 2 plus f of x, again it's on the outside, so it's going to be a vertical movement. It's an addition to f, so that's going to be the simplest of our translations. We are going to shift f up by 2 units. Okay, now we'll talk about function compositions. We write the function composition f composed of g as f, open parentheses, g, open parentheses x, close the parentheses on the x, close the parentheses on the g of x. We read it aloud as f of g of x. So another way to say that is it's f of, and then a set of parentheses, and inside that set of parentheses we have g of x. Sometimes we write function compositions with a little open circle. So we might write f open circle g, or left parentheses, f, open circle, g, right parentheses, left parentheses, x, right parentheses. It's the exact same thing as f, a set of parentheses, and then inside that, g of x. In this video, we are only going to use the parentheses notation. We're not going to use the little circle symbol. Let's consider that we have two functions. g of x is x minus 3, and h of x is negative x. To find f of g of x, that's f with a set of parentheses and then g of x inside of it, we would plug in x minus 3 for g of x. That would be f open parentheses x minus 3 close parentheses. So really f of g of x is f of x minus 3. And what would that do to the original function f? Well, if we were finding f of x minus 3, 
we would be shifting the original function three units to the right. Okay, how about f of h of x? Well, we would replace h of x with negative x, so that would be f, left parentheses, negative x, right parentheses. And if we did that, if we found f of negative x, what does that do to the original f? It reflects it horizontally, and that's over the y-axis. All right, let's put together a different composition. What does g of h of x do to the original function g? Well, let's plug in what h of x is. h of x is negative x. So g of h of x is the same thing as g of negative x. We're replacing whatever the value is inside of the function of g with negative x. And the effect of that is going to be to reflect g horizontally over the y-axis. How about capital C of g of x? That's written capital C, left parentheses, g of x, right parentheses. What does that do to the original function c? Well, we could write this as c of x minus 3. And so we're replacing x with x minus 3. That is going to move c to the right 3 units. So all of these horizontal transformations that we've been doing, those are all just function compositions. Let's do a bit more practice using this function composition and function notation with a table of values. The table has three rows in it, x, f of x, and g of x. I'm going to read down the columns so that you get the x, f of x, and g of x values that go together. There are five columns. The first column is an x value of negative 1, f of x 2, and g of x negative 3. The second column is 0, 1, negative 2. The third column is 1, 2, negative 1. The fourth column is 2, 5, 0. And the fifth column is 3, 10, 1. The first thing we're going to do is find f of 2. So when the input is 2, what's the output value for f? Well, when the input is 2, the output value for f is 5. All right, when g of x equals 1, what's x? Well, g of x equals 1 is over here in the last row of the last column. And that happens when x is 3. Next, we're going to find 2 times f of 3. So first, let's find f of 3. So let's first find f of 3. The input is 3, and the output is 10. So what we'll have here is 2 times 10, which is 20. Next, we're finding 3 minus f of 3. The 3 minus is just part of the formula. And f of 3, we just found that. That's 10. So we'll have 3 minus 10, which is negative 7. Now for those compositions. First, we're going to find g, and then a set of parentheses. Inside of that is f of negative 1. So it's g of f of negative 1. We're going to start with the inside. We can find f of negative 1. f of negative 1 comes from the first column where the input is negative 1 and the output is 2. So g of f of negative 1 becomes g of 2 because I know that f of negative 1 is equal to 2. Next, I'm going to find g of 2. So I'm looking at the column with the input of 2 and the output for g of 0. So g of 2 is 0. Next, I'll do f of g of 1. That's written f left parentheses g left parentheses 1 right parentheses, right parentheses, or another way of thinking about it, probably an easier way to think about it is f of, that's a set of parentheses, and inside that parentheses is g of 1. So we find g of 1 first. That's the only part we can actually find to start with. So that's the column with an input of 1 and an output of g of 1 is negative 1. Let's rewrite f of g of 1 as f of negative 1. Now we need to find f of negative 1. Looking in the first column with an input of negative 1, our output is 2. So f of negative 1 equals 2. Now f of f of 0. We'll start on the inside with f of 0. So we look for an input of 0. This is the second column. And the output would be an f value of 1. f of f of 0 becomes f of 1. Now we need to find f of 1. So we look in the column with the input of 1 and the output of 2. So f of 1 is 2. 
finally looking at g of negative 1 plus 3. And that's g left parentheses, negative 1 plus 3, right parentheses. Well, if we start on the inside, we can do the negative 1 plus 3 first. So that would be g of 2. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And now we're finding g of 2. So in the fourth column, the input value of 2 gives us an output value for g of 0. So this would be just 0. OK, let's see if you know what you're doing. I want you to take a look at this graph and evaluate the expressions involving f and g as they're defined in the graph. So f is a line. It has a y-intercept of 0, 1, and it goes through points 2, 2, 4, 3, etc. So it's a line with a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 1 half. g is a parabola that opens down through the vertex of negative 2, 4. It has points at negative 1, 3 and negative 3, 3. Pause this video and try these expressions, then come back and let's see how you did. This one is super important that you try yourself because you otherwise are going to be really overconfident about whether you can do these or not, and you might not get it on the first try. Okay, we're back. The first thing we're going to find is f of 1 plus g of 1. So f of 1, input of 1, gives me an output on the f graph of 1.5. So there's a point at 1, 1.5. 1 so I'm going to replace f of 1 with 1.5. g of 1, I'm now looking at the graph of g, and g of 1 is way down here at uh, 1, negative 5. And so I'm going to put in negative 5 for that. And so now instead of f of 1 plus g of 1, I have 1.5 plus negative 5. And that gives us the result of negative 3.5 when we put them together. All right, I'm going to erase my annotations here and go on to the next one. 2 times f of 3. Well, the 2 times is still going to stay there. I just need to find f of 3. So my input value is 3. My output value for 3 looks like 2.5. So I've got 2 times 2.5, and that's going to be 5. Can I'll erase my annotations and go on. Next, we have negative g of negative 2. That's negative g, open parentheses, negative 2, close parentheses. The negative is going to stay there on the outside. So really, I just need to find g of negative 2. On the g graph, g of negative 2 is a positive 4. That is actually the vertex of the parabola. So negative g of negative 2 is going to become negative 4. All right, now the compositions. Let's see how we did. First, we want to find g of f of 0. We'll start by finding f of 0. That's the inside part. f of 0, input of 0, output of 1. Instead of g of f of 0, we have g of 1. Well, now I need to find g of 1. So g of 1, I'll go to my g graph. My input is 1, and my output here is negative 5. So g of 1 equals negative 5. Erase my annotations and move on. f of g of negative 1. That's f open parentheses g, open parentheses negative 1, close parentheses, close parentheses. We'll start by finding g of negative 1. g of negative 1 is 3. f of g of negative 1 becomes f of 3. Next, we need to find f of 3. So with an input value of 3, my output value is going to be 2 and a half. f of 3 becomes 2 and a half. Let's try f of f of negative 2. We'll start on the inside with f of negative 2. Go to our graph of f. f of negative 2, an input value of negative 2, gives us an output value of 0. So this is going to, so f of f of negative 2 becomes f of 0. And then I want to find f of 0. f of 0, an input value of 0, gives us an output value of 1. f of 0 is 1. Now, if you got flummoxed the last time we paused and didn't quite get all of this, 
this would be a good time to pause again and retry these last two problems and make sure that you really have the hang of this. Super easy to watch me do these problems, much harder to do them on your own. So give it a try. Okay, let's see how you did. We're doing f of f of zero. We'll start by doing the inside part f of zero. It's an input value of zero and an output value of one. So f of f of zero becomes f of one. Now we need to find f of one. That's an input value of one and an output value of 1.5. f of one is 1.5. Last one, f of g of negative 2. We'll start with g of negative 2. That's an input value of negative 2 and an output value of 4. So f of g of negative 2 becomes f of 4. Now we need to find f of 4. Input value of 4 becomes an output value of 3. f of 4 is 3. Hopefully what you've seen from this is that you have to work slowly and carefully. If you jump ahead or try to do too much in your head, it can kind of go sideways on you pretty fast. When I do these problems, I do them as multiple steps to make sure that I don't mess up. You should probably do the same thing.